Okay, good morning to everyone and welcome to our first of four webinars. My name is Angelo Manfredi and I am a researcher and the project manager working for Engineering Engineer Informatica in Naples, Italy. Previously, I worked more than 10 years in the same company as a project manager for Italian and foreign telecom sector customer. Since 2017, uh, I have been in research and development area. Area. in particular since 2017 as a project coordinator for the European project the Hyper360. Hyper360 main result is an end-to-end -to -end tool set that allows to realize uh, interactive 360 videos by adding uh, interactive elements uh, to the background video. These elements can live directly in the scene, as is the case for graphical elements, audio and video elements, and 3D mentor, or redirect to outside links, such as another interactive video or in HTML5 pages. Hyper360 also allows the tracking of user behaviors to propose a more personalized viewing experience. Our consortium is composed by eight organizations from five countries. Using the tool set, two pilots have been produced and the user assessed. Finally, the project received the fund by the European Pro Union on 2017 and started in October of the same year to last 36 months. Today, we are in the last month of the project. Okay, let's start talking about the project pipeline. The project final result is a toolkit that enables the integrated production and delivery of immersive interactive video. An interactive video is a video where the viewers can not only look in any direction, but also they can trigger interactive elements to get additional information like audio, video, HTML5 panel, or to jump to related interactive videos. Capture, post-production, and delivery are the three main phases of the project pipeline. Project pipeline is realized by using our suite of software tools. These tools are integrated and can produce and deliver interactive videos to play on standard web browsers smartphone like iOS and Android, and VR head-mounted display, for example, Oculus Blue. Three phases. The first one is the capturing phase. The tool for capturing can improve the capture high-quality video content and allow the recording 3D performance on visual character. We have two components. The first one is OmniCap, is an high quality video content capture tool. It integrates several rigs of 360 degree camera, from sophisticated multi camera array to devices equipped with the two fisheye lenses. The next one is Captions, is a software tool to record 3D performance of a visual character to be later fused in 360 interactive video. The next phase is a post production. OmniConnect Web, released for this phase, allowed the adding of interactive elements to a background video in post production. All interactive elements will be overlaid to the background video on the fly during the playback. Finally, we have the delivery phase. Hyper360 delivery is a cloud based. Content is streamed to lightweight player on all major platforms. Support for immersive and interactive features require a network connection. Currently, they can, the content cannot be packaged to be downloaded for offline fruition. In this surface, we have two components. The first one is OmniPlayer, is a, a Hyper360 set of players for interactive 360 video playback. Ordinary market players do not support this feature. OmniPlay players instead support all Hyper360 features on all main devices, standard web browser for PC, iOS and Android smartphone, and mounted display. OmniCloud is a Hyper360 internal support cloud service that delivers the interactive video realized with OmniConnect web. 
This component also hosts Hyper360 profiling and recommendation engine. Obviously, in this 36 month, our Hyper360 project went through several research activity. We always gave a priority to the understanding of the media sector expressed by, uh, by our partners, sorry, RBB and RTI. I will not get into further detail about this, since you are more, I'm so sure about that, interested in our final result. Let me just say that our results are integrated in the sense that they can work smoothly together, even though some results are optional. In the next few slides, I will go in a bit more detail about each tool. The first one is OmniCap. OmniCap improves the 360 capturing process, proposing an innovative set of features. It supports several capturing rings, from sophisticated multi-camera arrays to fisheye lenses device. Enables a simultaneous operation of mixed camera architecture on the same event. Also, it integrates an effective quality check component to analyze the video content. The quality check components support the latest set of 360 video quality analysis algorithms. Take advantage of a parallel processing in multi-core CPU and GPU to significantly speed up these algorithms. The next component is, uh, is Caption. Caption is a tool to record human performances in the form of a movement 3D character for a later fusion in 360 videos. These 3D storytelling elements, we call them Mento, could, as an example, be used to, to tell a story or to guide the view, offering a further flexibility and a creative possibility. Caption covers all aspects of this process, from 3D capture to 3D visual character animations. The two images below show the capture phase where a human person and this gesture are captured by advanced sensor. In particular, please notice the sequence of movements, frames, captured from the later elaboration. OmniConnect Web is a browser-based authoring tool to make 360 video interactive. By using OmniConnect Web, the director can, in fact, add interactive elements to any background 360 video by choosing from a rich set of possible overlay objects such as label, icon, text, 3D video, audio, 3D mentor, and links to other media. For any such element, you can set for both the properties, for example, size, color, position in the scene, and its relevant events. Events such on click, on appear, and also order are used to define action that must happen if and when the specific event is intersected. Uh, please notice that the interactive elements are not permanently merged with the background video. They are separately stored in a database, which use MongoDB and overlaid on the fly during the friction. This choice has several advantages in terms of flexibility and manageability for managing different interactive versions of the same background video. In particular, a given configuration or overlay element can be used as the basis for a new additional configuration by changing some element or adding some future one. OmniConnect Web also allows to add our 3D virtual character, Mento, produced by Caption, to the background video. Basically, OmniConnect Web treat the mentor, once imported, as any other overlay items so that the properties can be associated to them. 
we will see that in the play phase, our recommendation engine can suggest dynamical highlighting of some elements on the basis of the past behaviors and the preferences. These behaviors must be somewhat prepared by Omniconnect Web. In fact, the property tags available for each hotspot allow the curation to add strings with similar semantic meanings that will be later processed by another component, recommendation engine, to provide specific uh, hotspot recommendation. The next component is OmniCloud. Our cloud uses a reliable software stack, HTML5, WebGL, Node.js, and MongoDB to manage all hotspot data while a streaming server manages the base video file for optimal performance. All internal interaction use REST API calls. Our cloud infrastructure also hosts profiling and recommendation engine. For improved performance and for a smooth playback, the contents are streamed by a video streaming server. Currently, we are using AWS Amazon Streaming Server. The object to overlay on the fly on the 360 video during the playback, like 2D video, image, icons, and so on, can reside on the cloud provider, Amazon AC2, or on our server farm, ENG server farm. Okay, let's start talking about the player. OmniPlayer is a suite of players for multiple platforms. They support all the standard uh, player functionality like uh, navigation bar, uh, pinch to zoom, uh, tap, uh, and so on. And uh, on the fly, it added the interactive element to the background 360 video. Hyper360 realized the player for standard web browser, Android and iOS device, and uh, virtual reality headset like Vive or Oculus Go and also for smart TV like HBB TV. The players also collect the user viewpoint preferences and behaviors during the playout. They forward this data to another component profiling engine to create and update personal profile. These profiles together semantic data are further elaborated by recommendation engine to emphasize some overlay elements during the video fruition, providing a cue for personalized navigation. Hyper360 also realized another tool, automatic camera path. The idea is to automatically compute from a 360 video a visually interesting camera path to play back on traditional TV with no players for 360 video. The last two components are recommendation in, uh, engine and the profiling engine. The Hyper360 recommendation process leverage user preference learning and the semantic profiling to, profi to provide the personalized highlighting of selected elements. During the playback, the player gather the user viewpoint preferences and behaviors as uh, which part of the video the view focus on, for how long, which object in the scene they interact with, and send them to the profiling engine to create and update personal profile. The recommendation engine elaborate the data collected by the profiling engine, combining it with appropriate semantic data to emphasize some overlay elements during the video fruition providing cues for personalized navigation. Uh, that's all. Thanks so much for, uh, for your attention. Now I leave the floor to Simona Tonoli for the next uh, presentation. Okay, so hello to everybody. I am Simona Tonoli and I, I am a manager, I'm an innovation manager at, um, at RTI, Mediaset, in the technology department, and I'm responsible for uh, European projects uh, also. Uh, together with Beshid Baradaran, we uh, were in charge of uh, completing the Hyper360 project. 
I will soon go to, to, the, to the essentials of the project. Basically, what we will talk uh, uh, in the next quarter of an hour is uh, about is uh, the pilots that we created together with RB, RBB. Our pilots are, uh, we, will, we will present you just a general description of what they did so far, and then a live presentation both for RTI and RBB. So first of all, just a few words uh, uh, about uh, what, what is the idea behind uh, uh, the, our pilot. So don't, don't be scary about uh, all the words that I put in these slides. This is basically only to, to, to let you understand that before, uh, I mean, in order to take our decision to, to embark on this uh, nice, very, very interesting project, we, we took, of course, some information on the field and on the market. So apart from the <clears throat> great idea that our research partners had to, to promote uh, this project. We, we also collected the information from the market itself and we understood that uh, there were, uh, regarding the trends around uh, virtual reality and uh, augmented reality was really the focus of many um, uh, main reputed research institutes. So the, 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 the the idea was that uh, um, it, we, as a media, as a broadcaster in the media sector, we could not do without trying to test and experiment in these fields, considering the data that uh, the main reputed institutes were were providing. And what we conclude, uh, we conclude. So the conclusion that we derived was basically that there was really a very strong and growing appetite for immersive uh, um, experience uh, uh, by the consumers, in the, by the audience. And uh, that, that in actually there was no real, uh, let's say, uh, new winning business model around this new technology, at least not so far in the, in the media sector. So our idea was to experiment on that and try to understand uh, if it was possible to, to also to, ex to expand this uh, experience to HBBTV, which we did, which we did with this project. So we were the first in Italy to, 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 to go live with, uh, with uh, a Niper 360 um, uh, video on, on TV, on HBBTV. And I think that uh, with this project, uh, uh, both we and RBB, and RBB, sorry, as a broadcaster, we met uh, really the, the multiple challenge of finding some very interesting ideas, developing it, but also be able to pilot and describe it, it effectively. Um, the the um, uh, the, the channels for potential distribution that we envisage are the ones that I am showing here in the slide. And uh, of course, the main, uh, the most important for us is the web and the HBB TV. So except for Oculus Rift, we were really able to, to pilot uh, the, all these, um, all these um, channels. And um, basically, what was uh, our task on the on the project? Uh, because we are a commercial TV, and because RBB is a public broadcaster in Berlin, based in Berlin, basically we split the the two objectives of uh, testing two different scenarios about immersive experiences. We were more focused on advertising, and uh, RBB was more focused on journalism, immersive journalism. So what we did was to kind of create. Uh, the conditions for the pilot to be uh, effective. So we talked with the production units, we gathered information from the people who were really working in the TV and people were really working in our case in the advertising uh, department. So we, we did so many focus groups and interviews with the advertising units in order to understand what could be the real requirements about this potential employ of the technology. Then we, we, we went on with the phase of collecting the, the, the shooting, the shooting itself. So we were really very, very new uh, with, uh, with the 360 cameras use and we really need to, to learn and involve our operators, TV operators to help us somehow. Most of the job is something that we did our own because uh, the, the cameras, uh, uh, one important fact to mention is that uh, cameras now available in the market, 360 cameras are so user friendly and so ready for user, common users to be used that uh, it was really very easy to do the shooting and um, do the, sheet, the, the, the stitching of, of the videos. Uh, a little bit more complicated was to try to elaborate on the on the on the on the videos and try to see if those videos were qualitative uh, 
enough uh, for the standards of a broadcaster like Mediaset and of a broadcaster like RBB. Then, so we started uh, uh, to enrich this, uh, these uh, videos with uh, some hotspots, some interactive hotspots, thanks to the toolkit that uh, the partners uh, developed and provided to us. And then we, we needed to understand if our audience was really ready to uh, kind of use this technology and what they really thought about that. So we had these focus groups and assessment phase where we, we tested uh, both the output of the toolkit and the toolkit itself with real people, with real professional and real users. Thanks to the help uh, uh, of uh, Politecnico, in our case, uh, we were really, uh, we, we really did a great job with the students of Politecnico, both in uh, trying to use the technology and trying to use the output of the technology, understanding how it was better to um, create it. And then we are, we were really in, we are now start, um, entering uh, the phase of uh, the real dissemination of the project with this webinar, for example, but also with some other uh, events, participations. Um, and uh, we, we are trying to make the project known both internally and externally outside of our company. And I think that the results that we achieved are really interesting because they are, they, they are really uh, kind of uh, offering the site for many multiple uses, so not only in TV, but in many multiple sectors. So basically, what uh, very quickly, what we did in the first uh, uh, year of the project that we called phase one, okay, we, we, we tried to experiment together with Publitalia. Some of the colleagues are also present in the webinar. I really take this occasion to thank them because uh, they were really helpful. They were, they really did a great job with us. I mean, it's not only us. Um, so the first idea was to involve some brands and Technogym was the one that for the first, that was really very, very eager to participate. The, the, the interesting thing about Tech and Jim is that they were not even uh, kind of uh, customers uh, uh, of uh, Publitalia. They became, after they knew that uh, we were doing something innovative, like uh, with, with iPress 60, and they wanted to give us their their uh, brand in order to experiment uh, in a gym, how it's like to be in, in a gym and try to understand and, and, and showcase the different machines, how they work and they have different trainers around, scattered around and uh, have different information regarding the, the gym. Then we had the same, uh, the same kind of uh, great uh, occasion and opportunity to be present at a live event, uh, the presentation of Universita Cattolica uh, year, um, academic year. And it was interesting because it was matched also with an artist that was doing some interesting thing in, in, the, in the chiostro the, of the, in the building of the Universita. And then, because we thought that our audience was not uh, maybe too much uh, familiar with such technology, we created a, a sort of a tutorial to uh, guide uh, our audience in using the 360 uh, technology. So there, we, we, we created this video, open air, with a journalist explaining what to do, how to interact with the hotspots, explaining how to use the platform. In the second year, we did something, uh, uh, let me say, we, we prepared ourselves because the tool was good, was growing more, um, more uh, sophisticated uh, and uh, more features were added to the tool. We tried to be a, li a little more ambitious with our scenarios and uh, we decided that uh, a good idea was to have like uh, um, an understanding of how, of how the camera could behave on, on the moving on water. And so we, we created with, with this uh, partnership with the Regione del Veneto and uh, with uh, Navigli, and we shooted uh, some, uh, some videos onto the, onto the water and the, the camera behaved perfectly. The quality was super okay. So we were pre preparing ourselves to, to go to Venice and do the real uh, pilot. Unfortunately, because of the COVID, uh, because of the, of the floods that uh, Venezia had during this period, uh, we couldn't actually, but we had some shooting from Navigli and uh, we did the pilot with that. And then we wanted to understand how the camera could behave uh, in a closed environment without a specific enlightening study for the TV show. And we went to the uh, Veneranda Fabrica del Duomo Museum too. Then we created a very interesting uh, showcase in the Big Brother. This is something that uh, my colleague Brigitte Bardan will explain in detail and will show you the live showcase into the tool. 
uh, we had this uh, great opportunity to be there before even the participants and before even the press knew about how the, the furniture, how the house was, uh, was being uh, uh, furnished. And then we, we also received the, the interest by Armani Cafe at a Christmas party. We were present there at an event, ex very exclusive event, and we did the shooting and the, the pilot also there. Um, sorry, because this is starting, but okay. Uh, as I said, the HBTV both for us and RBB is the, probably the, the most important thing uh, uh, because our main audience is sitting in front of, of the TV. We, create, we cre also created an app uh, which contains many multiple 360 videos that can be uh, can can offer the 360 experience uh, by by simply uh, uh, controlling uh, through the remote control the the viewing ship and so the, the movements uh, in in the environment in the 360 environment and then we also tested the same thing uh, uh, on the on the mobile so as you can see here we could do replicate the same thing on the mobile. <clears throat> okay, now, I mean, this is just, I mean, I think that the most interesting thing for you is to, to learn about, uh, about the real demo. So I leave the ground to my colleague, Beshit Baradaran, who will show you uh, hands-on what is really uh, the thing that we realized. And I think this is the most interesting part. So stay connected. Please be shared. Hi, everybody. Uh, nice to meet you, everybody. Uh, I'm Beshi Baradaran. Uh, I actually uh, joined Mediaset around one year ago, and also I joined this uh, project uh, with uh, our teammates and our colleagues um, one year ago. And uh, I also worked with Simona on all the pilots and the whole project. So as Simona said, I would like to show you some of our pilots um, and the good things that you can do with this uh, technology. As you can see here, uh, this is the platform which I am actually interested in it. Uh, so it's like a 360 uh, environment, uh, which uh, I'm going to firstly show you the Grande Fratello, which is a Big Brother show, which is a show that we had this opportunity uh, to do some uh, shooting inside the house. And the reason that we decided to go on with this pilot uh, was that we discovered that uh, many of the audience uh, uh, who watch these shows are really interested to know about the products uh, which are available in the house and uh, what are the brands, where they can buy them, or uh, I mean, how they can reach to this information about the house and the products which are available there. And uh, as you know, that uh, we are doing a lot of advertisement inside the house uh, with a lot of product placement. Uh, so we decided to make this uh, video and this pilot uh, for this project from Grand Fratello Show. So as you can see, you are in this uh, room uh, which you can intern to the Grand Brazil show and uh, as you can see by clicking uh, on uh, on the flag uh, you can enter and jump to the next video uh, actually behind the scene there is this uh, background music uh, which you cannot hear it unfortunately but uh, if you had this possibility to use the browser by yourself uh, for sure you can hear everything so as you can see uh, you can every hotspot that you see here everything that are blinking are interactive uh, object which you can interact with them and uh, this make it much more interesting for the audience uh, to get to know better about the products uh, or even if they want to get uh, more information about something uh, only by interaction by themselves so for example as you can see when i click on this um, room which is blinking it would give you information about the bedrooms uh, so there were some beds uh, with uh, this specific brand that has been used uh, in the grand fratello show which uh, we provided this information here and the person who is interested to know about this can easily for example click click on this uh, uh, website and it will actually jump into the website where you can find information about the product and even its price and where they can buy it. Uh, so, I mean, uh, 
this technology give us this uh, chance uh, to get more i mean uh, when you're watching a show or uh, if you're watching a tv or uh, any advertisement and you like the product you just uh, by clicking on it uh, you can uh, go to the website where you can buy it or get more information about it uh, so it's a very very interesting and innovative way uh, for product placement so as you can see in the house everything which are blinking uh, are the products uh, that we actually advertise through the house uh, so not only you have this uh, possibility to actually explore the house because you know as you have seen the show many of you i mean the show is showing you only some part of the house so you're not able actually to go and explore the house by yourself so firstly we're giving you this opportunity to explore the house and then uh, we give you this uh, chance to know more about the products that you're actually interested in inside the house and you want more information about them so as you saw about that so far we had this uh, like when you click on it you get into the website inside the browser and you get more information about it and for example if i go to the next um, to the next room uh, you will see like uh, other things for example we try to somehow for make it a bit nostalgic we actually uh, connected the, the the our web browser with uh, some parts of the show so for example here there is two person who are talking to each other and we i mean they are not the cast real cast of the grand fratello show but consider that for example if uh, you will see in the house that there are two casts you can click on air and uh, you will see actually a part of the show that two of the people, two of the cast were talking and that we actually connected these two parts together. So there are many, many, many ideas that we can be implemented and uh, we try to implement some of them. For sure, the producers uh, or the people from the product placement or advertising department uh, can use these ideas in a much, much better and much, much efficient and expert way. Or for example, think about that uh, you would have this one of the cast uh, who are actually during the show or in the house are for example, reading the book, and while you're watching the show, you're interested to know, oh, what, what this person is reading about, and uh, you want to know more about, like, okay, I want to know what is the book. So you would have this chance uh, with this technology to, for example, click on the book, uh, and uh, you will see all the information about the book, and uh, if you're more interested, you will find actually where to buy it. I mean, you can provide uh, many, many information uh, through this uh, platform. And uh, well, I would like to show you um, one of our pilots also for, uh, for the Armony show. So you will see other feature because for the Armony, we had another uh, idea behind it uh, to use the Armony for our pilot I mean firstly we were really uh, lucky to have this chance to shoot uh, the cafe but another reason was that uh, I mean um, the main reason was that for me was that when we did the shooting and when we visit the Armani cafe the Armani website we discovered that uh, they are not only selling the beauty stuff and uh, clothes but they have other other many many other products which uh, I didn't know about them, and maybe uh, many of you don't know about them. And I was thinking that this would be something really, really interesting for increasing the brand awareness uh, by interacting the people through this platform or having this 360 experiment. I mean, now you will see this experiment that we are going through this uh, cafe, but uh, you become more familiar also with the Armani different products i mean uh, the starting point is here which you will see this uh, logo of harmony cafe which when you click on them you will see the different category of the products of the harmony so you will see that they would have actually harmony fury which means like the flowers or hotels or beauty or dolce i mean for me it was really 
really, really uh, interesting that I never knew that Armani would have uh, like different chocolates, different, uh, I don't know, jams even, or they, they producing these flowers uh, for events. And uh, of course they have some furniture. So if you want to know about any of these uh, products uh, category, you just click on them and it will actually bring you to the website where you can get more information. Uh, so. I mean, uh, you're exploring this cafe, which sometimes, I mean, uh, I don't know, some people would not have the chance to go to the cafe. Maybe consider that uh, you are uh, in another country and now due to the COVID, you are not uh, able to come uh, to, the, to Italy to visit this cafe. Uh, so you will have the chance uh, to do it virtually. And uh, also you get the chance to know more about the Armani um, products. So as you can see, we are in the cafe and uh, there are many products that we put them here or there are many products that actually are the um, that are designed by Armani and actually were um, put it here. So for example, if I click uh, on uh, some of the products, uh, you will get information about the product, uh, what is it, uh, and uh, I mean, uh, it's uh, one of the accessories, so you will get uh, information about different accessories and you find the product here. And uh, I mean, you can go to their website to buy the product, or for example, if you click on the flower, I mean, these are just an example that we made. I mean, uh, just showing the advantages of this technology and how you can create a different experience for your audience. So as you saw, by clicking on the flower, you will get to the actually the website where you can see the different flowers that the uh, Armani Cafe were making them. Not Armani Cafe, actually Armani brand. And uh, we try to also like, I mean, we try to use also these uh, mirrors as uh, somehow an affection of uh, the brand uh, advertisement and showing their best uh, advertisement for the perfume. So for example, if you click on this uh, uh, mirror, you will see one of their famous uh, advertisement for one of their famous perfume. Unfortunately, as I said, uh, you were not able to hear the sound. I mean, if you could hear it, it would be much more interesting. And uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, so there is this possibility to actually showing some video through the place. Uh, I would like to go ahead and show you some of their uh, other products. Uh, so their chocolates. Uh, for me, it was this part was more 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 interesting because I never knew that uh, Armani would uh, actually produce these products actually also. So, for example, you will see different uh, boxes of chocolate here, which when you click on them, uh, the, the chocolate pop up, and you will see like there are different chocolate that they have. And for example, if you click on them, it will take you exactly to the website where you can get information about the chocolates. Uh, and uh, visit, uh, I mean, what uh, type of chocolate they have, what are the different tastes, and even you can buy them and you would know about the prices and everything. Uh, and uh, yeah, there is another idea that we had uh, that we wanted to share with you about uh, this um, product placement idea that we had, uh, which was one of them was that I mean, in the Armani Cafe, we have this bar place uh, where there are, you can see like it's here. You can see different, many, many different um, like uh, bourbons and many, many different alcohol and a uh, bottle of uh, different uh, brands of wine or uh, whiskey or uh, vodka, which we were thinking like uh, this technology can be used also for new, new ideas uh, for having the collaboration between different brands. So for example, Armani Cafe with uh, different bourbon brands, uh, and uh, so we were trying to show you some examples. So for example, we have this chance to see the bar. And if you're interested to know more about uh, one of these uh, bottle of uh, whiskey or I don't know, uh, vodka, you can click on them. And uh, it pop up actually on the, uh, on, the, on the table for you, 
which you will see here uh, the bottle firstly and secondly uh, the the cocktail glass so, so if you are interested to more about know about the bottle when you click on it it will actually jump into the website where you can find the bottle and know more about uh, for example Ren Martin and uh, like to buy it and if you're more interested to know about like okay if i want to make a cocktail with this uh, bourbon what should i do and if you click on it i mean these are just some of the idea that we have so it will come pops up some uh, recipe for you to how to make it and uh, this actually telling you also that uh, they are serving this cocktail actually in harmony bar which is somehow interesting. So it's like an advertisement for the bar, but also for the bourbon and the cocktail. And I mean, you learn how to make the cocktail by yourself. And if you're interested to know more about like what are the other cocktails that you can make actually with Remy Martin, you can go only here. Like uh, you can check out uh, you can check on this, uh, check out all cocktails and uh, you will get this uh, information. So yeah, the same happened here, for example, with uh, these uh, bourbon and uh, you would get this information. And if you click out uh, here, you would get to the website uh, where you can get more information about the other uh, type of cocktail that you can make. Actually, I mean, this is not showing the right page because I have to add my uh, age uh, to show that I am uh, I'm not under 18 now. However, this was uh, another uh, example of the show. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we had this uh, chance to do these uh, pilots mainly related to the advertising and product placement segment. But as Simona said, uh, we had this plan to do the shooting for the Venezia which uh, we could have this uh, uh, pilot about uh, the tourism industry. And it was a very great uh, idea, but due to the flood that came in January in Venezia and then uh, the COVID and everything that comes after it, we didn't have the chance to go to Venice and do the shootings. So we were not able to maybe, make this pilot. Uh, Yes, maybe but, we'll do it uh, next, in the next month. <laughs> yes, exactly. I mean, as soon as we will have the chance, uh, we will take this. Uh, but uh, I wanted to tell you that uh, this technology is not going to be used. It's not only, it uh, doesn't have only advantages only for the advertising or uh, for the product placement, which we just show this feature of it. Because, for example, as we work with the students of uh, Polytechnico, we try to explore the different advantages and opportunities of this technology in the other sectors also and uh, we had these uh, pilots uh, that we made together with the students uh, for real estate or even online education which you know is something really interesting uh, due to the situation that COVID made for all of us so I think many many universities and schools are really interested in online education but in an interactive way which could increase the learning uh, curve for the students and so on so we use it actually in different sectors or also some of the students use this technology for traveling which unfortunately we are not allowed to show this pilot uh, due to the authorization and so on but i just wanted to yeah. mention that there are vast of uh, opportunity for this technology to be used and we just show a uh, small uh, features and small advantages of this technology to you. Yeah, okay. exactly. Just one one very last thing before we, we, we need to, to leave the ground to Doreen uh, Bashida. Very last thing, I mean, what you saw is not so smooth because of course there is a connection that is not optimal. We are just going through go to meetings, so it's not uh, the best thing to do. Um, uh, it is uh, the experience itself is very smooth and the other thing is that also the graphics, it's not uh, done by super professional people, it's done by us so you can, you can imagine the potential of the thing if you really have people that are really in the in, the, in the working as designers or as, as graphic designers of the thing the potential for product placement is is really huge okay yes so i leave the ground to doreen my name is doreen Witter from rbb i'm project engineer at rbb and as uh, simona already introduced rbb focus more on the immersive uh, journalism area 
uh, immersive technologies offer the opportunity to personally engage with the story and puts the audience directly into the 360 degrees. Okay, that was just the introduction to give you a, a feeling wh why we uh, were part of this project. So our interest uh, was more in the immersive journalism area and we would like to explore what can we do with such a technology to get or, or provide the audience a new experience. So at the beginning of the project, we uh, had several interviews with editorial departments from TV as well as from radio stations from RBB that were interested in creating interactive pilots together with us. What you see here on the slide are just screenshots, not so uh, impressive, but I will tell you something more. And uh, after my presentation, Oliver will also present the pilot to give you more, more feeling of what we have done. So the crime scene, as well as the RBB campus tour, um, was um, both, that, uh, as I said, uh, developed together with editorial departments. Um, the idea was to enhance a 360-degree video with targeted enrichment based on the viewer's preferences, like texts and hyperlinks to other media like images and videos inside the application. Crime scene is a fictional crime case the show's case was developed uh, in two rounds. I will come back, back to that later on in more detail. The RBB campus tour uh, gives insight into the RBB premises in Potsdam and takes the viewer into the TV and radio stations. It was also developed in two rounds and enhanced the speakers according to the further developments of the tools. The Fritz Music uh, Festival was, uh, was developed together with uh, Fritz, which is a popular juice uh, radio program. The idea was to provide an immersive experience and allow the user to navigate to different areas of the festival ground, like different stages or even the backstage uh, area. Last but not least, uh, in the pilot phase one, we have the Fontanes 360 experience. This scenario was developed together with RBB Kultur. This is a radio program on culture and classical music. Fontana is a popular poet uh, uh, and author of the 19th century. Last year was a Fontana year on occasion of his uh, 200th, uh, 200th anniversary. The pilot is about Fontana's tour through the Mark Brandenburg, that's the area uh, uh, in Brandenburg, which he uh, which he wrote down in his poetry. So uh, the idea was uh, that we bring the user to the places which are described in the poetry. So it's more a lean back experience. So you see the places, the beautiful landscape, hear the poetry and the voices as well as music. Here, here you see what we have done in the, mainly in the, in, the, in the last phase of the project. So as I already introduced, the crime scene was, uh, was further developed uh, and, and enhanced. Uh, I will explain it in more detail and also the RBB campus tour. Um, the crime scene in the second phase was uh, enhanced with a gamification approach. So it's not only to provide more information to the user, it is to give the user the chance to influence the narration. We work close together with the editorial department uh, of the program, which is called in German Täter Opfer Polizei. This is a regional uh, crime scene report for Berlin and Brandenburg. Uh, they are trying to find with the help from the citizens possible perpetrators, seeing suspects or other persons police may be looking for. It also provides advice to viewers how to protect themselves from crimes. The application is still online and we managed to, uh, to uh, introduce them twice uh, in, in the TV program. Um, it is a fictional crime case. Um, it uh, gives the user, the user learns uh, about the work of the police and the uh, crime scene investigation experts through an interactive gaming-like experience. So the users are invited to explore the scene and support the work of the crime scene investigators. Like an intern, they learn, learn how the evidence found at the crime scene is evaluated and finally choose the murderer. So um, 
I would like to give now the floor to Oliver, who will show the pilot in more detail. Thank you. So back to me, my name is Oliver Pidanzit. I'm a project engineer at RBB and I uh, did most of the shooting and post-production for our uh, interactive 360 pilot. Uh, as Doreen mentioned, it's about the um, crime show uh, Täter for Polizei. And um, the general idea behind it was to present real police work at a crime scene. And uh, to do that, we uh, we invented a fictional crime case in an, in an underground parking. And yeah, as Doreen said, we also added some, some game-like features during the, the, uh, uh, during the project and during the development of the, of the pilot. Um, so for example, you, you are only allowed to visit the police office um, after you, you uh, went to the victim's apartment and in the end some some uh, new interviews of suspects are only available when when we know those subs uh, 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 those uh, suspects uh, through other interviews but i will show you that in a second so um what we see here is the 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 website of the of the pilot so this is the the official um website of the Tito for polizei tv show and uwe madel is the host of the show and um, so this uh, this pilot is publicly available through our website, and uh, this is the the website that we use to to advertise the pilot. It's on air or online more or less uh, since first of June. So and down here you can start it, and we're gonna jump right in. So this is Uwe Madel, the host of the show, and he's he's leading the uh, the users through this uh, uh, experience. And he now gives some some information about the situation. So what we have is there was a a jewelry jewelry shop uh, behind this door that was robbed, and there's a dead person uh, lying in this underground car park. And that's the situation that uh, that we're starting with, and that we um, that we need to solve and find the. Uh, Find murderer. It's it's still not clear whether those are two connected cases or independent, but the user needs to find out. We give some some information on how to navigate, like this uh, click and like like drawing left right, and um, yes, now the user is free to uh, navigate uh, through the scene. So uh, what we have we have these CSI agents. Uh, doing their work, and as I said, we wanted to explain um, work, like um, um, police work, uh, on a crime scene. So uh, we introduced some some hotspots uh, that give more insights. Um, so we have these magnifying glasses. When you click them, you can see some 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 details uh, on the uh, the evidence is found. Um, so we. For example, down here we have have a mask, and uh, we have a witness, an eyewitness uh, who's standing here and waiting to be interviewed, and these CSI agents uh, doing their work. And uh, the second option, interactive option, is the speech bubble. So when we click the speech bubble, we we so to speak ask the uh, the agent what he's doing. And he will turn to us and uh, give us some information on what he's doing and what he already found out and how the process process further on will be. So he's he's telling us now then that he has found a, a shoe print and that he's going to secure secure it and uh, we'll get more insights uh, later on after the analysis. Um, we also have those uh, TV screen icons. Um, they lead to 2D videos. So when I start this one, um, uh, it, it's a 2D video shown here. And that is a video um, where real police uh, uh, police professionals uh, explain their work. I mean, it's based on the fictional uh, showcase that we've built up, but it's showing um, how real police work uh, is done. So there we have... Uh, a couple couple of those those videos integrated here so this this guy is securing uh like like tracks 
could that could be found on the clothes of the of the dead person and um and this is this is one piece of cloth from the from the dead person and it's going to be analyzed uh um afterwards to find like small pieces particles of of colors or something we're going to see later on so the user can explore these uh, all the all the the hidden hidden uh, tracks and uh, try to 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 get a clue of what happened and uh, we can then switch to the um, to the apartment of the of the victim so over here we also have have an agent a CSI agent uh, explaining giving some insights uh, we also have added some 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 pictures showing uh, that he's been uh, the dead person has been chasing this uh, this girl, which is the the wife of the of the the owner of the jewelry. So there might be a track there, and uh, we find his mobile phone, which which indicates uh, where we uh, where we analyze the um, the phone calls that he did, and we find out about some friends and and rel possible friends and relatives through the the pictures that we find in his apartment. So getting back to the to the underground parking, we see that there's a new uh, icon popped up, which is the uh, the police uh, the link to the police office. And when we go there, we will meet Uwe again, who now from now on helps us or helps the user, um, like uh, combining the uh, the the evidences that were found. And he he also gives some some more insights uh, on the outcome uh, of the findings of the experts. So um, so he now explains that there was a a stolen uh, that 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 the um, the signs on the car were were stolen uh, from a, from a different car, and that there were shoe tracks found where they. Um, where the, the the sign plate was was stolen, and uh, after he finishes in his introduction, uh, all these uh, these uh, uh, items will be will get clickable, and we can find out a lot more about um, about the case. So, and from now on, I mean, as you can see, we have like the the. Um, Uh, the, the things that were stolen, and uh, we have all the the tracks that were secured in the in the garage. And um, here you can now click on interviews, for example. So these are interviews with uh, people we already know. And every once in a while, when the user clicks the right uh, the right item, uh, then uh, I'm stopping this one. Then Uber might show up uh, and give some more information uh, on the things that were uh, find out and more and more evidences appear on the board that, that are interactive and clickable then. So for example, now, now that we get to know this guy, um, because the sister of the, of the victim knows him, uh, we could interview him and the interview video uh, gets available. So that's the idea that we have, and uh, in the end, uh, the user is asked to um, to select to choose uh, between uh, one of the three three uh, leftover suspects um, who was uh, the murderer. I'm going to use the shortcut to get to the end of the of the things. So in the end, all uh, all items are available, and. Uh, Usually, the user now has seen the the last hint um, that were the uh, fingerprints on the magazine of the gun that the uh, that the murderer forgot to remove, and uh, so now you can see the final screen. And if you're interested, if you don't want to see how it how it all happened, uh, you need to. Um, Turn your head away now. Otherwise, this is the final uh, final video. This is what uh, this is showing the, the the progress of the crime and how the 
how and where the, the small hints and tracks and evidences were uh, collected. So during the, um, so for example, they, they, they now gonna, gonna um, spray color of, on the security cam and we've collected that, that's the stolen goods. Now they get into a fight in the garage because actually it was, it was they, they, they said they're not gonna take any weapons. Um, and now the, the victim said he's, he's out, he does not want it. And yeah, the other one kills him. <laughs> Yeah, he's trying. He, he's he's trying to to remove his fingerprints. He's he's trying to get get rid of the weapon, and uh, he's leaving in his BMW with the uh, stolen signs on.